Welcome everyone. What better way to, to actually start 2015 than with a buyer's guide? And what I actually want to discuss here is go about different SSD options out there for your system, whether it be a high-end server or it be a, just a general desktop or maybe you're doing a like a media PC downstairs to put on your put uh, with your TV. I'm going to go through some some options here. And what actually drew me to this is that I was actually in the market for an SSD. I have about a four or five year old Intel 510 series that's getting extremely full. Uh, it's just 128, 20 gigabyte version, 128, I believe, one of the two. I don't know, I've had it so long I haven't seen it in a while because it's buried in the back of my system. But it's actually reaching its full point. I wanted something that's a little bit more, had some Christmas money. So I actually went on a, on a buyer's guide for SSDs. And what I found is that there's a million SSDs out there now. There used to only be a few players in the market. You had Intel, Toshiba, Samsung, and that was really it for uh, reliable drives, especially four or five years ago. But now there's drives everywhere. Every single manufacturer seems to make them. And I actually am gonna go through a different, different guide here. I have three different, as you can see with my scroll there, three different ends. I got a high end, uh, mainly for systems that are going to be doing a little bit more extreme stuff, a lot of reading and writing, uh, especially if you're moving video files around or anything uh, along that lines. If you're just opening programs here or there, you really don't need this. But I got a high end, I got kind of a middle of the road, which uh, the middle of the road you're going to find is using a little bit of the same general technology that's been around for a while, Sandforce, Micron, all those controllers that have been around for some time now that aren't really as advanced as, let's just say, the price to gigabyte ratio, which is basically the low end. Uh, some of the newer options out there, like Samsung's gigabyte ratio is more of the lower end. They have the lower warranties. I wouldn't I didn't necessarily call them lower end because they've been doing some endurance testing on SSDs. And the general consumer out there that's just opening programs here or there, SSDs, they're going to die hardware-wise before they die from just you read and write on them and they just croak that way. You're not going to do that, especially if you're just opening stuff up. Media PC, for example, if you're just opening up Steam or a program or you're opening up a, you know, a browser to watch a video or something along that line, it's never going to die. Unless it's some hardware or there's some short or something along that line, some circuit ends up dying. That's the only way they're really gonna die. So we're gonna start at the lower end, the price to gigabyte ratio. And what I would actually consider here is your general mom and dad, you know, if you're just having it in a laptop that you're just gonna be throwing around, stuff that's not gonna be necessarily sensitive. Uh, if you're not gonna be writing files to it daily, large files, one, two, three, five, ten gigabyte files that you're gonna be moving around, this is uh, going to be something for you. Or for a PC downstairs, I really recommend any type of system that you're going to use just for gaming or anything along that line to get uh, just price to gigabyte ratio. Get the cheapest one you can get that maybe has the best customer service in case you got to RMA it and go from there. So what we actually have here is the Samsung 850 or 840 EVO. The 840 EVO, I know, is they, they got a firmware out for it that's supposed to help, I guess, over the longevity. It, it really, the read and write just dropped through the roof, not through the roof, under the roof, down, down to the ground, uh, to where basically they were running slower than some hard drives. And they got that fixed. Samsung released a firmware that's supposed to balance it out. So we're going to be good to go there. But the Samsung to 850 and 840 Evos, uh, you're going to get those for that, that sweet uh, around 40 cents per gigabyte. Uh, it does vary from time to time from what sales they have. Right now they're about 45 to 50, mainly because they're new, the 850s are, but they'll come down in price. You'll be able to get them under that 40 cents per gigabyte ratio. And the real one I'm recommending here is the Crucial MX100. 512 gigabytes is the only model I really recommend because one, it's $200. I know that might be a little steep, but it actually has, um, a little bit better performance than the 128 gigabyte and the 256 gigabyte version. You can still get the 128 or, 100 or, or uh, 256 gigabyte version. Uh, 256, I've seen it for $100. I've seen it for 90 a few times. So you're looking at like 36 to 38, 39 cents per gigabyte. Everybody's recommending that drive. I do too. If you're not doing a whole lot of uh, extreme stuff with it, that's the way to go. And uh, basically anything in that range, the Kingston Digital, that's around 38 to 39 cents per gigabyte. That's a good drive. Any crucial drive. 
Crucial uh, M500, M550, any of those. So you can get them... Uh, or they're reconditioned or it's actually refurbished, you can get those really cheap. So that's something to check in, into. But for the price of gigabyte ratio, I recommend under 40 cents per gigabyte, uh, depending on what size you get, 128, 250, 500, 512, whatever you end up getting. That's what I recommend there. Now for the middle of the road, these are more of a little bit older technologies. Some Sam Force and Micron controllers have been around for a while. Uh, they're basically just doing a little bit of updating on a previous drive that was already good. And what I actually have here is the ADATA 610. It's a reliable drive. ADATA's got great customer service, which is something I, I really enjoy. It's it's 40 cents per gigabyte, so it's even around the lower end for a price. But that would be another drive I'd recommend. Uh, the this, this, this SanDisk Ultra 2 is around 44 cents. Uh, that's a great drive, great middle of the road drive. It's got great performance. Uh, it's read and writes are stable over a longer period of time than some of the lower ends. So that's a great drive. Kingston HyperX uh, 3K. It's around 58 cents per gigabyte right now, but it'll come down. It's uh, I've seen a few sales on it to where it's been significantly below that. So keep that one in mind. And the Intel 530 or 520 series, those are still great drives. Yes, they're a little bit more, $10, $15 more than some of the cheaper ones. But you get that Intel warranty in their customer service. Intel's customer service is crazy good. Their firmware is insane in that they are basically, the I think, probably the best out there when it comes to the firmware. And that's really it for the middle of the road. There's some Corsair drives out there that are good. Uh, even OCZ now, um, they're doing some really good stuff with their drives since they've kind of, they produce a lot of drives out there that weren't really of, of very good quality, but they've really upped that. And that's really it for the middle of the road. Now we start getting into some of the higher end. Uh, SSDs, which you can actually get really good deals on if you're just wanting a high-end SSD, got a little extra cash to spend, got some Christmas money, some tax tax return back. Look at these drives. Uh, at the top of the list is the Samsung 840 Pro 10-year warranty. That's a big deal there. Uh, I've never dealt with Samsung customer service, but I've never had anything of theirs die of mine. But uh, you're looking at about 65 cents per gigabyte price per gigabyte there, so they are a little bit higher, but you have a 10-year warranty, and these are some of the fastest drives out there. The 850s, even the 840s, if you can find an 840 for a good price, I wouldn't hesitate to go that route. These are some of the higher-end uh, SSDs out there. The SanDisk Extreme Pro is about 56 gigabytes uh, price per gigabyte, and it is, from all the reviews I've read, probably the fastest one out there. Uh, I'm not really sure how SanDisk does it. Maybe it's their firmware. I'm assuming that's what it is because mostly drives are about the same thing. And that leads us to the other one, Intel 730 series. Uh, it only comes in two versions, 240 gigabyte, 48 gigabyte, 480 gigabyte. And it is about 52 cents per gigabyte. And it's not the fastest. I will say that it'll perform somewhere with the middle of the road, actually. But it's going to have some longevity to it over two to three years. It's not going to be the fastest out of the box, but it may be the fastest two years down the road because you have the Intel reliability, you have their firmware, which they update regularly, and it's they just make their software along with it just makes it so easy. So that's it, guys, for my buyer's guide. Three different price points, high-end, middle, price to gigabyte ratio. If I had to pick one out of each of these, price to gigabyte ratio for the cheaper lower end, I'd go with the Crucial MX100. It's cheap. Go with it. It's got some newer technology in it that's uh, supposed to help save your data. I'm not really sure how it works. Don't really care. I back my data up pretty regularly, so I'm not really worried about that. Middle of the road, I'd actually recommend the ADATA 610 or an Intel 520 or 530 series, mainly because of their customer service and reliability. The high end, I'd recommend the Intel 730 series. Yes, it is a little limited in that it's not for desk or it's not for laptops. It runs hot. Run, it draws five watts of power, but it has Intel's name on it, and that's a big deal because their customer service reliability are top notch. Uh, I I like the Samsung 850 series also, but the Intel 730 series would be my choice for a higher end uh, SSD, and it's a little bit actually cheaper uh, when you look at the gigabyte per uh, price point ratio, it's actually a little bit cheaper. So that's it guys, hopefully you guys like this. There's so many SSDs out there, I went through a pretty, uh, I read, read a lot of reviews and these are the drives that people kept recommending and I looked at and 
read about and I would recommend. So that's it guys. Hopefully you guys have a good 2015. Just started. I think we're nine days in. Yep. See you guys next time and have a great evening.